like to call the meeting to order? Yeah, I can look on my phone. Seven o'clock even. Like to review the minutes from October 4th. <coughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Special meeting from October 9th. Move to accept. Damien and myself weren't here. Second. Here we go, second. Yep. All in favor? Did you notice when you're not here, it's one hour and 18 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You want to leave now? <laughs> uh, financial statement, sir? Sure. So I had emailed the committee the monthly expenditure report for October. Um, I don't know if anyone needs copies. We have paper copies here. Uh, nothing major to note. We did some adjustments. As you recall, last month we had school committee legal that was getting over budget based on um, some of the expenditures that were encumbered there. So we made some movements from supplies and materials, which has historically had almost nothing spent out of it, to adjust those lines so that they are all within budget. Um, we also did a transfer from the salaries for the business manager to the um, financial professional services line to re reflect the fact that now it's the school business management is being done by a contracted service versus um, a salary and also made adjustments in some of the salary lines to adjust for some overages and underages to balance that those lines out. Um, the only item that I would point out that we are watching is if you go to page 10, um, the tuitions to non-public schools, as you can see, it's over budget by $74,000, and that's an additional student tuition um, in or tuition out, I should say. And um, just FYI that Right now, the line below it, tuitions to collaboratives, is currently going to be um, expended with a PO at 102000 So there's going to be $15,000 saved in that line that once that PO is entered, uh, we'll move the funds up to cover some of that $74,000 deficit. And also, circuit breaker for what it's scheduled to come in at is under budgeted by $51,000. So we also have a cushion on this year's circuit breaker uh, revenues that we can apply if we need it through the course of the year if we don't if we expend all the other budget items so right now with those two items it's a gap of about ten thousand dollars so not a major concern is, is the seventy four thousand uh, dollars one kid multiple kids do, you, do we know it as far as i understand it's one student okay anyways they just decided last minute to switch to switch schools and come here no, it was a it was a it was a student who had to have services provided outside of the district, so there were services that couldn't be provided okay. inside the district. Does anybody have any questions? Robert, you must have questions. My only, my only thought is it'd be nice to get this other than the night before in an email to have it sent out to the agenda or why have it available so we can actually go through a study ahead of time. We're working on that. That being critical, I'm just, I realize it takes time. Yes. No question. Pete? Page two under clerical. Mm -hmm. Salary? Yeah, that's, that's what I actually left as a notation for myself because as I was going through and balancing out the salaries, I was going through the reports that come out of Infinite Visions and there is a budgeted amount and budget. And for the most part, the difference in them agreed when, I, when you looked at those two items as compared to doing the, uh, when you go to the positions and pay, the funding source. And so in almost all of them, the difference between the funding source and the budget to budget was the same gap. There were a couple of them where they weren't. So I kind of left that there because I want to have a conversation with Infinite Visions as to what the difference is. And I suspect it's probably um, other expenditures that happened in that line that we have to accommodate for. But I want to have a conversation with them first. And that's my reminder to just check on those. 
but there are other lines in the budget that are still um, amply under budgeted that I can make that adjustment once I know what the answer is. Anybody else have any questions? Huh? <clears throat> can we have a total on the warrants, please? Sure, and actually I have the, so in, if we could have a quick conversation about the warrants, because last time I brought all the packets, um, today I emailed the warrants. So I have the summary page for the warrants, which is $1,548,151.44 to be signed. Um, How many warrants are there? There are 19, she put it at the top. You can just pass that around. We'll sign it for you if you like. Okay. And then the only other thing I had was I wanted to let you know that the end of the year report um, has been completed and submitted for Frontier. So um, I don't know if you usually review the end of the year report, so I emailed you a copy of it. And this is the certification that the school committee chair signed, so I can forward that up to you. And we're waiting, and we're waiting for E and D certification too, right? Correct. Yeah, so my question is, but you've already signed the report. I haven't yet. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, just, you know, we need to have greater controls uh, on it. I'm not saying we should do it tonight, but we, we should not. Uh, In other words, get it, get it a day before, more than the day before, yeah. Robert, right? Public comment. I guess we're going to have a lot of public comments tonight. So if we have some regular public comment, other than the capital planning report, hit us with it now. If it's, if we're going to do the capital planning, if you have public comment, we can wait until we get to that, or we can jump to it, whatever we want to do, right? I think you should move it. Okay. Give our audience they should we yep. kind of invite them all out. So, so was there any regular public comment? Anybody have any? Allison, you have anything for us? Okay. So we're, what we're going to do now, we're going to move up the um, uh, the capital planning report, and uh, we'll discuss it, and then everybody can chime in. If you have questions, hopefully we can give you all the right answers tonight. Um, so I would just, for those of you in the room who, who don't know, um, I'm Darius Modesto, the superintendent, if I haven't met you. And this is uh, Joe Markarian. Um, Joe is works with FERCOC and is a municipal finance specialist. He's been our consultant through this process. So um, we may be using Joe a lot of times to answer some of the questions. Um, he, he is the, uh, I would say, the, the a lot of the brains behind um, behind the, 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 the report that we put out there, um, or the plan we put out there. And, um, and we've been working on this since February of last year, um, and you now we're bringing it forward, looking for feedback. Um, again, just kind of re repeating what has been kind of set out there, and not looking to do a vote until next month. Um, and if, we can, if there's the areas that we need to tighten up or change, or in, in getting feedback, so you know, I I sent out an email to remind everybody to invite um, our town governments to come and give us their feedback tonight, <coughs> and so. There's really no new report. We haven't changed the, 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 the content of this report um, for this evening. So, um, Bob, I would suggest opening the floor for comments or questions and um, do it at a pace where we can get to them and try not to repeat the same question more than once if we get to it. Everybody has a chance to go over the report. Um, I'm not sure where we want to start with questions. First one that raises their hand can ask the first question, I suppose. <laughs> Paul? Oh, I know you want me to ask. Sure. <laughs> okay, look, um, Paul Antea, um, Waitley Finance Committee. Um, thanks for the invitation. Um, it's obvious you guys have done a lot of work here. Uh, we're familiar with Joe and what he's done. Um, we had a chance to go through this with Fred and Brian and we're going to peek at what the hit's going to be on our tax base. Um, one, one big lingering question is the who's going to do it? How's it going to be done? 
We know what needs to be done. We know why it needs to be done. But can we go to the voters of Waitley and say, we recommend that you bring these funds forward without knowing the exact manner in which these funds are going to be spent, who's going to corral this thing, who's going to own it. So all these projects, everybody here goes away in five years. There's a turnover. So nobody owns it. So we have to know, in order to feel <clears throat> honest with the people of, of our town, that um, there is ownership here and that there is a central body who's responsible for not only finishing the project, but the warranty on the project. So that's, I'll be quiet at that. How do you want, how do you want, what format do you want to do? Do you want to do questions and answers? Does, does, does Joe want to respond to it? <clears throat> I'll start and then you usually help me out as you usually do. Um, <laughs> I think it, you know, basically we're looking at a lot of these projects are, are, are going to be handled by the, um, by the buildings and facilities director. Um, a lot of them are, um, you know, within the scope of what he would be doing uh, or she would be doing day in and day out. Um, the larger ones being the track um, and possibly the, the library issues on there might be looking to get a clerk of the works or someone to oversee the project um, as well. Um, I think when you look at the long term, when you look at this, when you look at this plan, we have not. The past practice has been something's broken. That year we go to the town, we get money from it. You have no idea what's coming. We try to let you know by December-ish what's coming. <laughs> we're now we're spelling out what it looks like. Hopefully for the, at least it's a 10-year plan, but we all know the plan's a living document, and we can we can do our best guess of what's coming. But in the next few years, we know what's coming. And we're, we're, we're providing that information out so that towns can plan, properly plan and work with us on, on, on how to, you know, how to address those needs. And so this committee will change, this position may change, but you still have to have plans. So I don't know, I don't know how you go, you, you want to plan forward and you have to trust that the body is going to see it moving forward because yeah. it, like in any... Uh, uh, I think what I would say is that, uh, that that question, I mean, Fred, we've gone by, through that a lot, and there's definitely two camps, it's people who feel it's manageable and people who think, you know, it may not be manageable. I, um, a lot of this, I won't even say a lot of this stuff, but uh, quite a few of this stuff, you, we're not going to know until you get into it, you know, whether it's too much or too little. And I think what, what's important is to have the flexibility to say, well, it is too much for a facilities director. We've got to accommodate that. Um, that that's probably going to be a discussion. You may have interviews with facility guys who say, I don't want any part of that. You know? I can tell you that in most, not in most towns, in a lot of towns and certainly cities, like DPW superintendents oversee the projects that take place in, uh, in their towns. If it's over a million five, of course, the state requires you to have a project manager and a clerk of works and so forth. But these aren't, aren't that. This is, these are more like contract management as opposed to project management. And there may be a nuance there. It's just somebody making sure that what w was promised in the contract is delivered. Um, as far as warranties, that's in the contract, the agreement and so forth. But um, we try to accommodate uh, the hiring somebody, you know, with, with that 24000 in the first year may turn out that that's more than not enough, may turn out that's not enough. But I honestly don't know that we're going to know the answer to that, the question about, you know, do we, do we need somebody to, to manage this stuff until you get into it and in, uh, how, how much time? I think there is an underlying fear that, um, look, administration we pay these people to educate kids and I don't think that the community would like to see a percentage of their hours be directed towards project management away <clears throat> from the, oh, the education. Well uh, do you have any suggestions on uh, how it might otherwise be dealt with? Well I think you've got to get a full-time project 
Bruce. Yeah, I don't. Um, that that's something to look at, I suppose. I have no idea what that person would cost. <laughs> yeah. And that person might be based on what's the value of the contracts that they're overseeing. Because you don't want to pay somebody fifty grand if they're just sitting on their butt doing, you know, with nothing to look at. Uh, my name is Bruce Hunter. I live in Deerfield. Um, my comment was uh, to answer that question. Um, I think there is a need for somebody to do oversight, other than somebody that is employed as uh, from the Frontier Regional School, and um, this can be done in several ways. You can re rework the the fiscal ma uh, your physical. Uh, facilities manager's position to do that, have that specific to his job, and then ha hire somebody potentially to oversee the um, other staff that uh, would do the smaller maintenance type projects. So it might need that you need to hire another person. And I outlined that in my uh, written statement, and I think it's, po it's a possible suggestion. And I want to make, I want to um, say that what Paul has said is. is um, everything that I've outlined to you is my concern, is how this gets implemented. And it's a major concern. It's a lot of projects in a short period of time. Uh, a committee that um, is, has, has the expertise, hopefully, um, to procure and um, go forward and manage the project and maintain the records. And from some of the answers I'm not sure the records are being maintained. So. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for reading the report. <laughs> uh, and and that can, it's a, the the final decisions on this are going to be made by this group. And uh, if if that decision is to to add a part time person for project management, you can certainly do that. You know, and, uh, if people feel like that's the way to go. And uh, so I I mean I have no problem with that. It's just you know if that's what can, if that's going to make this a more um, Credible report, then, then the the committee here should consider it. Sure. Just, just a comment. Back. I just want to think, just so people in the room who don't know, Bruce put a lot of time into giving us feedback, page by page, going through the, the whole document. I just wanted to recognize that because when you're talking about your feedback, it wasn't one or two quick thoughts. He put a lot of time and effort into it. I just want to say that's what we were looking for: is people's thoughts and, and in a constructive form. So I do just want to recognize that, that was publicly. My, that was my Fred? Yes. Uh, just to put this in a little perspective of what, it, what it's going to take to, to manage all of these projects. I mean, if you look at the, the, the list and the criteria for implementing some of these, the ones over $50,000 require going through a process of advertising, <coughs> getting bids. No. Uh, over 50. Yes. Over 50,000, 50, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the way I read this document, that ends up to be at least three to five every year of doing that. The first, the first year may be one or two, but, but then it comes to three to five every year doing that. In addition to the other projects in here that don't require you to go full-blown advertising, that you can do it. So you, you've got both, both workloads you've got to deal with, not just the, the advertising through the state process and all them requirements you also got the the, the phone calls the the independent uh, <coughs> estimates for the other projects to do that and and as I've been you've been hearing me say that takes a lot of time we've gone through that our, in our in our own town in Whaley for one project it, it's a, a, a lot of time not so much expense but a lot a lot, a lot of time to do that uh, and I've asked uh, Darius, is that what he wants to spend his time on before, uh, you know, or the facilities manager, is that what we want? Because this is only one project, all of these, if you've got one project and you've got the other four schools plus Frontier, you've got five other schools, five other things you've got to deal with plus implementing this program. So it, it's not like this is the only thing that that person is going to do. This is not a difficult right. issue for me. Uh, yeah. if, if it makes people feel better to put in a line item for uh, an assistant to do project management and I'm directed to do that, I'll, I'll put it in. 
Um, I, I say I'm not opposed to that at all. We just thought that this was a, this was a, this whole document is really a starting point uh, to get the process begun about thinking about capital and how to handle capital, including how to get it done. So um, this is not etched in stone, and, and it's going to change once you live with the, we live with it for a year or two. You're going to. You're definitely going to say, well, this didn't work, that didn't work. I know, Bruce, you talked about time frames. Is there enough time to review stuff? And, you know, if it turns out that it's not enough time, well, you change it and you create additional time. This is not etched in stone. So um, if somebody says, put a line in for 35 grand or something for, for a, um, an assistant facilities director for project oversight, sure, I'll plug that in. Trevor? Uh, Trevor McDaniel, I think um, I can do it the committee late uh, planning this, but talking with Fred and others, that that's generally was our concern, is how do we manage that, knowing the workload that's on, on the staff already, um, and we kind of struggled, like, well, what's the dollar amount? How do we, what amount do we put on? We talked about 2% or trailing it off because the projects were smaller as it, as it got later out in the years, but um, I know that the amount of work that it's going to take and we were just trying to figure out what is that dollar amount so we'd love to hear from others with more experience that you know what are we looking at and is it you know per year every year we have this 35,000 to pay somebody to do to manage this stuff or is, or, or is that too much so if we could get some guidance on how much that would be that'd be helpful so um, Phil Cantor from Conway so a couple of things. First, I just wanted to address briefly what Paul said about the uh, school committee changing whatever. There's a bunch of people in this room that have been on this committee more than 10 years and, um, and have serious institutional knowledge and whatever. The, 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 sec the second part is that we tried to craft this, because um, I was on, I was on the, the, the committee that crafted this. We tried to do this with, uh, it's not just numbers, it's policies and it's definitions so that whoever is on this subcommittee um, going forward, is on the capital planning subcommittee going forward, whoever's on, it was on the school committee going forward, uh, is hemmed in by guardrails that mean something. Um, so, so that when we go before town meeting and say, this is for capital plan, this is for capital stabilization fund, that money cannot be used to pay salaries. Or pro it, 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 it's in our policy, it's in the definition. Um, and so we, we wanted, sort of that to be the backstop for this whole thing, that, that um, there really are serious guardrails being put into place, so that what we say is what's going to be. Um, and then um, it, it, in the committee itself, I, was the, I, I argued that we, should, uh, that, that we should not be putting a lot of money into project management. Um, and number one, it was because our current facilities director didn't feel that it was necessary, um, especially years uh, years six through ten. When you look there, those are small numbers, small projects. Um, it think, and and then um, uh, it, it's important. You know, even though this is a relatively big number, it, it it breaks down into just a couple of big projects and then a lots of little projects, and so. I, I was really reticent to use, or reluctant to use, sort of a formula, a percentage formula, for something like the the, the track project, when um, it's what's going to be one vendor that you're overseeing, one company that does it all, um, and I didn't think that a five or whatever whatever surcharge you were, you were con I didn't think that was quite appropriate. I thought the way that we ended up putting a number on that was sort of a compromise, um, uh, but. If, if everybody else thinks that we need more, more project management, whatever, but I thought it was really important to put, keep the numbers as low as possible to make this as, most, as, as likely as possible to pass, and that if it's not uh, necessary, uh, I, there's prudence and then there's necessity. Uh, I understand we're trying to keep the number low, uh, but I have to ask you how many large projects have you overseen in your and you're as, um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of what we're, where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, so, right. that's, can't go to the people and go, this is what we think is going to happen. Not with this kind of one. Right. You can't. Well, Ryan, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Ryan Down of the Town Administrator in Whitley. 
I think our concerns were more directed towards years one, two, and three, and the capital needs back. I think they're called capital needs backlog items when there's when there's a big push for years one through three, yep. and a lot of these larger, more significant projects, and how those would be procured, how the contracts would be managed, those types of things. I think hiring a staff person would be another would be one way to do it. I was wondering if the committee gave any thought to packaging a lot of these together into one sort of comprehensive package and, and put it out for bid one time in terms of a comprehensive rehabilitation project. And you do one procurement, you hire a GC and they sub out the rest. They do the procurement for those. Um, they do the contracting for that. I was just wondering if that anybody had given that any thought. Um, I'll, I'll, I, no, that no, we didn't. I, I think that the, the feeling was that the decision as to how to pursue financing and was was a decision that was best made later on when when you really when the when the appropriate when people approve the project then talk about okay how are we going to package because there are some of these items we're even talking about uh, borrowing you know some are going to be long term some are going to be short term and you got to segregate them out and so forth and you you're right some of these might be bundled pretty nicely with the same uh, vendor with the same expertise so um, the bottom line is we uh, that was contemplated as a decision that was going to come later on once the plan was was adopted and you had a, a structure in place to move it forward. Uh, Dan Goodfield, Chairman of Capital Planning in Conway. Uh, I have a concern about the financing for the track uh, on the one-year notes. I understand that uh, it's a consideration of issuing costs, and I'm not sure that some of those wouldn't be incurred every year if you were renewing that note. I think my bigger concern is the ability to get a more favorable interest rate now than you might be able to get in a year's two or three from now. And Joe, you maybe you've got an answer on some of this. I don't know. Um, I was in a, a workshop a couple of weeks ago about broadband, and they were talking about financing broadband and weighing bonding versus notes. And uh, uh, Clark Rowell from Unity Bank was there, and he was talking about the rates. And um, the, the trade-offs are that um, note rates are lower than bond rates. Uh, bond rates are lower the farther you go out. Oh, no, actually, it's the other way, isn't it? Um, but notes, notes are less than bond rates right now. Both are going to probably go up over the over the coming years. Uh, his feeling was that the that it was better to go with notes and avoid the issuance costs because the the increase in the notes is going to be less than what you're going to be paying for issuance costs. There's really no issuance costs with notes. Um, you have to get a letter from bond council, just a green light letter that the state wants to see do DOR. And, um, and so it's nominal, um, but that that is a trade-off. I mean that you know if, if and, and towns do make that kind of decision. If they might be rolling notes from year to year and see how, geez, the bond rates are really down, we ought to lock into that. Uh, so that can be done. Was any consideration given to the possibility that for whatever reason the credit rating could go to an unfavorable? You mean the district's credit rating might take a dive? Um, no, I don't think that was discussed. I mean, we, we sort of assumed that, that I mean, you guys are going to be good. Would, but, you know, there certainly is a risk factor. Yeah. The, um, the other thing that Clark said in sort of addressing that is he said that um, notes are typically purchased by more local uh, institutions, uh, local financial institutions that are familiar with the towns, familiar with the people who run the towns, and uh, as opposed to bonds, which have a much broader market uh, and people who are not familiar with and, and may put may have greater demands uh, because they're not familiar with the local market. So he thought notes made more sense for the small towns. Now, he was talking in terms of broadband, so, and, and, but it was still notes versus bonds uh, conversation. Alexander, Town of Conway, a couple of concerns here, especially with regard to construction costs. Anecdotally, Materials prices have increased significantly over the last few months. It's been a real issue in project finance. So I would suggest that in our, in our budget that we do for longer term, 
there be some type of increased contingency for cost overruns versus now versus down the road, even as close as a year from now. The other suggestion would be that uh, I think a project manager has to be. We don't know the code, the town is going to be building, the, our facilities manager no code. These uh, projects that are not overseen, and we directly owns them, so there's no real true quote unquote ownership without having any proper oversight by a professional. I can tell you, anecdotally, they lead the cost over. It's just the nature of the beast. So it's a well worthwhile investment. Yeah. I mean, I do this stuff for a living, so I'm telling you from my experiences over the years. It's really important. Hi, Skip Olmstead, Deerfield Finance Committee. Uh, one of my concerns, I guess, is how are you going to finance this, and what's the, how do the towns support? Or, I guess, I'm completely at a loss for the financing piece. I I expect that the way that this will be presented, and we've not discussed um, format in terms of how the information gets from the regional school committee once it approves it and gets uh, to be in the form of assessments to the town. But what was suggested to me from uh, with from um, former DLS Division of Local Services people that I used to work with said that and this is uh, Rick Kingsley who's very fluent with regional school districts. I used to always shove everything to him. Um, he said his expectation would be that the, um, the the budget here would be approved as operating budget line items, um, debt service, and capital expenditures. Um, the likelihood is there would be a list of capital projects to be ex and a, a single number that would cover all of those and the towns would receive still a bottom line number so there the towns would still be will approving uh, the bottom line there's they wouldn't have any more sort of I don't know input or whatever whatever the word is that uh, no different than the way you know you, you do now the way you you uh, operating budgets now. Well, Operating budget, yes, but not capital. Well, the capital would just be a segment of the of the the entire warrant that goes to the yeah. towns, and as I say, the uh, the towns would be voting the bottom line. But I, if I remember correctly, you're talking about a, a four million dollar give or take total project for this. Is that correct? I think, uh, I think that's over the, over what period over of time? Over ten years. Over ten years. Let's just make for the for discussion purposes. Let's assume that we're going to pay for the same amount every year. Makes it easier for discussion. So that means the uh, principal repayment is about four hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, the debt, the, the uh, interest on it. I don't know what you'd be paying. Probably in the two percent range with notes, give or take. No, they're up to about uh, two point eight. Okay, call it three percent. So. That's four million dollars at three percent. It's one hundred and twenty thousand. So the first year, you'd be paying back uh, five hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. I just take the town of Deerfield since that's where I'm from, and we pay about half of the budget, give or take. So that's two hundred and sixty thousand dollars that you'd be asking us to contribute just for the projects. Uh, we have a. We have a budget of about $15 million. And for quick discussion purposes, our increase on an annual basis is in that 25 to 3% range. So maybe our budget can go up in total. Our contribution to Frontier, our contribution to the elementary school, to the tech school, what we spend in town, maybe 400000 and you're saying just for this part of it, you want two hundred and something thousand, two hundred or three hundred, three hundred. It's about two hundred thousand. About two hundred thousand. Uh, we there's no way that we can do that as part of the operating budget. I think uh, without that, without yeah. without some sort of an override, debt exclusion. Um, right. It's just too yeah. many dollars. I don't think it'll play out that way. Um, I think even if um, even if you were looking for bonding for the entire amount uh, from the start, that's the authorization. The actual issuance of, of bonds would really follow how much money do you need this year. And so you're not going to be bonding $4 million and issuing $4 million in year one. 
it's going to be a lot less than that because uh, no, uh, no no i wasn't talking about paying back i'm talking about paying taking the four million dollars and paying paying it back over 10 years it's going to average four hundred thousand a year i don't care how you do it four million dollars ten years four hundred thousand take the interest on that take the interest on that four million or whatever it is a hundred thousand you're looking at five hundred thousand for debt service the first year going out Deerfield, you're asking Deerfield to come up with 250,000 and the other 250,000 gets spread among the other three towns. I don't think there's any of us who have that kind of, without, without some sort of an override, whether that's a prop two and a half override or debt exclusion. And I think we need to discuss that before you go to town meeting. I think we need to have something that we can go to town meeting and say this is how we're going to pay for it. Well, this this plan does not bond that the four million dollars. It's it's a combination it's of irrelevant direct. whether you bond it or state house notes or however you well, do. No, you got to no. pay it back. There's a lot of this is just direct money. Um, direct money from where? The well, let me let me look here and, and on the plan that we have that we put forward. Uh, Deerfield would be paying 137,000 the first year. It would go up to 225,000 in uh, year, year six, and then it would decline down to 197 in year ten. But that's that's just there's no interest in that. But this is not all borrowing. Right. Well, where is it coming from? It's 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 um, operational dollars. It's assess. It's part of assessment. Real dollar assessments. Where, now, where do you think the town of Deerfield or the town of Waitley or Sunderland or Conway has that much room right. in their budget to increase taxes? I mean, Deerfield's taxes are about ten million dollars a year. Prop two and a half says we can increase that by about two and a half percent, by two and a half percent, and throw in a little bit for what they call um, new growth. Yeah. So three percent, 300,000, that's how much increase we, that we can increase taxes. Our local receipts increase maybe 50, 100,000 a year. And I can tell you what, our, our state aid has gone down rather than go up. We don't have the kind of money that you need to pay for this. And that's part of the discussion that will take place internally as to whether the numbers are too big and you can't tolerate it or but but the the whole point of the uh, this committee's effort was to was to address capital needs in a 10 and decided to do it in a 10-year period so and that's what this does I, this is, I, I, I say by again, the way I have no problem and, and this is my just question was how were you proposing to finance it well, I think each town really does town, have right? to make it to, it's no, no, its own decisions on that and then so but you can only you can only debt exclude what the regional school district might borrow to finance you can't debt exclude money that for instance there's going to be a line item in the regional school district budget for <coughs> maintenance um, it might be twenty thousand dollars for for Deerfield uh, you can't debt exclude that that's so hard. what you're, what you're saying is if I can't use debt exclusion then the only other option that I have is a two and a half override. Uh, if you need to raise revenue, yeah. Well, we need to raise revenue because I just kind of laid it out for you that at most we've got about 400,000 that we can increase revenue on an annual basis. And you got one year in here without paying interest payments of 200,000. Uh, and that's just this one school district here. It's a problem, uh, and I think before you go to town meeting, it needs to be resolved because I don't want to get to town meeting and vote all of this and then turn around and have the selectmen say, oh, by the way, we don't have enough money to fund a budget. And we didn't do a two and a half override, so we can't pay for this. Let's not get into that situation. We don't do that when you built the school. I chaired the school building committee for the elementary school in Deerfield for its first four years of existence. And we ended up going to several town meetings, but we didn't try to build the school without a debt exclusion or some sort of override. And I think you're going to need, you, I know you're going to need something. Scott, do you have a question? Yeah, I was going to weigh in if I could stop it. 
Scott Bergeron, Thomas Sunderland. I was in this committee. I was chairman of the finance committee, and I'm a selectman now. I understand Skip's um, and Deerfield's challenges well. I would say that um, the focus on uh, debt and debt exclusion uh, sends, uh, gives this report some short shrift. The reality is that funding a capital stabilization fund avoids interest, plain and simple. Creating a capital stabilization fund keeps money, and this is something that you raised, Paul, earlier, keeps it targeted toward the building long-term maintenance. The definitions are important. It doesn't go toward, it doesn't get lost in the ether of the general budget, right? And we, we all have that, we have all had a mistrust of where the ether in the general budget goes, either as an appropriator to that budget or creating one. Because most people in this room have created a budget recognizing, and Skip, you're good at it, recognizing that there are intangibles that happen. You have to have some, some latitude to move, right? That said, Fred's use of the term program, I thought, was wonderful at the very beginning of the, of the comments. This isn't a construction project in any way, shape, or form. There could be small construction projects inside there, i.e. the track. The rest of it's maintenance. You said you were in construction before in the business. I'm in the business as well. Facilities maintenance is not construction. Letting facilities go turns into programs like this that are 10 years in the rears. And if they were running this way 10 years ago, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. So the tax rate, the burden, all of that goes out the window when it turns into three and a half or four million dollars we have to borrow for, for what looks like, and these guys have heard me in meetings before talk about stair treads. I don't wanna borrow money for stair treads for 10 years. That's just dumb, right? Most people in this room get it. They've heard me talk about the stair treads before. Dumb, dumb, dumb. That's maintenance. But if you let it go, it turns into a $50,000 school-wide project. That's a project. That's not maintenance. So yeah, we have to pay for it at some point, but it's a multi-tiered program with respect to revenues. It has to be paid for at some level. Okay? It's not construction. Just follow yeah. up with that a little bit. Um, yeah, I have to agree with Scott. And what he said, but I, I really think that as you move forward and as you move off of this plan, um, yeah, to bring this to the public, you really have to, um, I think, spell out consequences of not doing this. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for this facility? What does it mean for families making a decision as to whether or not to send their children here or somewhere else. Um, all, all of those things are, impact, are impactful to decision makers. And what we spoke about a short time ago as to ownership of projects, the non-ownership of projects is why we are all here now. Because we have a deterioration in this place who do we go to? Who, who, who can I point the finger at? Who can I try to fire? Can't. They're gone. There's nobody. We don't want to do that again. We want to be able to hold somebody's feet to the fire if things don't go well. Plain and simple. Yes? No? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I, if I could follow up, Mr. Chair. As part of the report, there is, there's an re annual reporting function for tasks completed to each of the cities and each of the towns. That's an important piece. There is a, a, a pre-scheduling that goes through all of the year with that capital oversight committee. And then the school committee is reported to and then takes said actions with whatever staff is required to get those things done. I think, to your point, Paul, it's been lost in the past because we haven't heard about it at town meetings. Well, what did you get done this year? We got all kinds of stuff done. Well, 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 what? Versus a capital report. This is what was. This is what we spent. This is the year it was appropriated. This is what was completed. This is our projection for next year, and that both uh, lends uh, programmatic an uh, institution uh, with a program, but also credibility. It only take a couple of years, three or four looking at the report going, oh, they got that done. Oh, they got that done. Yeah, right. 
and then it becomes a measure of uh, more trustworthy than what we have had in the past. Cool. Credibility. Credibility. Okay. Brad, again, uh, I don't know if this came up earlier, Joe, or not in discussion of, of why the committee was organized and why we came up with this plan. And one reason was because if, if we didn't have a plan like this, the other option is every year come up with a handful of projects that we want every town meeting to approve. And as everybody knows, for the past couple of years, it's it's like pulling teeth to get some of these things approved. And it, and and we didn't want to go through this every year, picking out three to five or whatever projects and proposing them to town meetings in every town and seeing what reaction we got. There was no, uh, I guess we thought it was, it was a lot of wasted effort to keep doing that because that's what's happening today and we needed to do something different. And that's why we come up with a program over 10 years. So once this is approved, hopefully every town, every year at a town meeting, we're not gonna go through a two hour discussion of why we're doing this or, or nitpicking individual projects. So why are you spending this amount on this, on this item? We're trying to avoid all of that and to get people to understand this is a program of, of, of projects that, that, that are needed. That's what came up from this subcommittee. Okay. Skip. The yeah, I just, I just want to say that I have, I have no objections to the, to the projects. Uh, it's, it's something, you know, if I have a concern about the projects, it's simply, you know, yelling and screaming as I think everybody here at some point in time has said, why all of a sudden do we need four million dollars? What are we doing over the last 25 years of the school's existence? And clearly the answer is we didn't do a whole lot. So I don't know who's at fault. And, I, and it doesn't, you're right. I had to point my finger at Darius. He wasn't here most of that time. Can't do that. I'll point my finger at Bill. He's been here all the time. <laughs> He's the one that's always responsible for everything. So then ask you, uh, you're thinking 200000 is too much for Deerfield. No, what, no, no. What's I'm a reasonable amount then? What do you feel is reasonable? It, no, no, no. You, you didn't hear what I said. It's where do we get the 200000 from? <laughs> I don't think that's unreasonable. I, you know, where is it going to come from? We're not going to take it. We, our budget can't grow by that amount in the, in the coming year to come up with an additional 200000 So where... Are we going to get that from? I don't want to wait until April and we're all saying, oh, this looks good. And the selectmen say, well, wait a minute. We don't have that much money. We got to cut something. And when that's the way we typically work, we wait until April and, and we you know, delete here, there, play around that way. We don't have that flexibility. So I would like to address that, the financing of this thing up front and have the selectmen all on board doesn't do us any good to go to town meeting and have, you know, Deerfield say, look, we can't afford it, forget it, we're not going to vote for it. Deerfield can say no, and the other three towns, if you're going to put it in as an operating cost, the other three towns say yes, and Deerfield's got to find some way of financing it. So let's address that issue up front so that we're all in this together. There is, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the, the uh, pointing the fingers about how we're at this point now. We have a 20 something year old building that's got several hundred people running around it all day long, teenagers. Um, and if you look through this list, it's not as though there are things that wear out. And it, it just, I just want to make sure if we're careful with the tone of that we're, you know, the message that, you know, the TV is taking to the community is that because of mismanagement of the facility or of fixing the facility, we have this problem. We have this problem because we're in a 20 year old building that's halfway through probably its life cycle. Hate to surprise everybody, about 40, in about 20 years from now, you're gonna need a new building. And it's not because we didn't upkeep it. It's because it's a 40 year old building that's, that's used every day by hundreds of people. And, and so I just wanted to kind of point that out that, that there's, you know, when you talk about deferred maintenance, sometimes it's not in the budget. And so you question, do we wanna cut this program that benefits children or do I want to replace the light pole that's on backed into at the last basketball game? You know, in that in that given year, you cut. And so, I mean, we can go, I can walk around all four towns and point at deferred maintenance in every single public building. 
Okay, and why is it? Why are we waiting on that? I mean, we could walk down to the senior center down there. How did that happen to this wonderful old building? It's because you don't have the money from year to year, and you want to keep consistency of what this building is about, which is educating our kids. Okay, and providing the extracurricular programs that make it a wonderful place to be. Frontier is a very popular place to be. Look at our school choice numbers. Okay, they are through the roof compared to the valley. Okay, and people want to be here because we have built a good thing. Okay, and so. I just want to get into it, you know, when we talked about the former people, those people weren't there. I worked with a lot of the former people here, and they did their best to have a balance of what can we fix this year and how can we keep the program going. I, we can have the most beautiful new school in the valley. If we aren't doing a good job inside of it, you know, great, you have a great facility. So I'm, I'm trying to get the balance. So I'm, I'm sorry I went on a little tirade there, but it's, I, I, I felt a little attacked on it because I've been part of that administration the last 10 years. Well, you shouldn't feel attacked. Uh, but I mean, it's it's obvious. I'm okay. I'm, I'm not going to cry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying I just wanted to put that out there because well, it yeah, isn't. It, we can do it better, job, but it, and we all can that do it kind better. of stuff. But look, the past five years, past four years, Frontier has come to our finance committee, and we've loved you guys. You come in at two percent, two and a half percent increase, under two percent. Holy oh, yeah. well, Come here. Big hug. You know, I asked your predecessor, so when in God's name are you ever going to give us a Cadillac plan? Why is it always come in a little Toyota? Okay, when are you going to start fighting for what you need there? And it never, ever came. Okay, and we would get the budget a week before we met, maybe days never had time to go through it I mean just did you I mean you that thing reads like the Bible and it was so convoluted so I hear you this is a building a lot of kids it's a good place to be but there's also a heck of a lot of room for improvement Fair. so, so my, Trev, my Trevor. question um, to Joe is so I'm here in the impasse of or the issue is we can't fund um, we can't fund this through raising taxes we have to fund it through debt exclusion probably and we can't debt exclude a program so how do we go about how do we restructure this or structure it in a way where we could where we could do some debt exclusion okay. uh, well let me address about um, listening to people I, I, I think that I would you know, I'm an outsider, but I, but but I've had I've had you know I've worked in a lot of cities and towns in Massachusetts with probably over the last 20 years. I think that to Paul's point, I think the best thing that that you folks can do is to set up a structure where you can there is accountability. Set up a structure that where you know decisions are going to be reviewed, they're going to be made, and the next step is to to look at look at this plan. Every capital improvement committee, uh, that planning committee that I've ever seen, talked to, been involved with, it's it's a clash between needs and resources. It just is, and everybody knows that when you're in towns, anyways, when your budgets go out the door, the, the money the money comes out of capital improvements and it comes out of DPW, and, and that's where it comes from. And so, the the fact that that people are are uncomfortable with the cost here is is not surprising at all it, I'd be surprised if, if you weren't um, on review maybe it gets reordered maybe it gets pushed down the road maybe it's all about setting priorities what's most important and what's most important is getting the process going with a structure where people are accountable people know their responsibilities they know what uh, what they have to do and they know what's expected of them so I think that's a really important first step. As far as otherwise, uh, how to increase borrowing, I was looking at these numbers. What we've got in here now is borrowing for the track, whether it's bonds or notes, to put that aside, because that can be a later decision. Whether it's, uh, so this is for the track and for these, this what we call the backlog of capital needs. These are one-time expenditures that, not deferred maintenance, it's really capital that need to be done. That totals $1,136,000. There's an additional 
$150,000 a year that's intended to go into stabilization so that, as Scott pointed out earlier, there's money to pay for these items which the facilities director said, we're going to have to take care of these items at some point. We just don't know when they're going to go. You can schedule those. I mean, you could, you could borrow the, 150, um, the, the million five up front and schedule to take care of all those if you chose. And so that would be that be a two million eight um, uh, borrowing. Then there's deferred maintenance, uh, which I totals up to about four hundred fifty thousand dollars across ten years. That's operational money. That's that comes out of your budget. There's a maintenance and reserve, your normal rate maintenance and reserve um, maintenance and repair <coughs> line item that you currently have. That's fifty thousand dollars historically that's going to stay at fifty thousand so that's not new money that we're that that's being asked that's that's old money so yeah this the borrowing can get bumped up so that you can debt exclude it exclude it at the local level yeah so the question on the borrowing is it the, is it the school committee that borrows yeah. uh, but is it the town so how does the so the town the school committee borrows and then just Assesses the town, so is the town still in the issue of not being able to not being yeah, able to pay for this out of the way bond. It, it, it works with all of this is that um, the, the the regional school district has bonding authority. It it, it bonds authorizes and issues the, the bonds. It comes to, as an assessment to the towns. Now the towns have to figure out where are we going to get the money to pay our assessment for that portion of your assessment, which goes to debt service. You can debt exclude that locally. Okay. So yeah, that's so that's a town meeting vote and that's a town wide vote. Um, how comprehensive is this? In other words, has there been a, uh, an expert to go through all of the buildings of the Frontier Regional School District and do uh, no. an in depth? As far as well, the you say, yeah. use the word plural, this is just Frontier. So it's just through this building. And our expert is, is, is Bob Lesko. Okay, in dealing with in dealing with the um, all the contractors he's had through here in the last he's worked in this district ten years. He knows this building. He knows every outlet that works and doesn't work, kind of deal. And so um, we're using his expertise now. And it was someone had brought up a, a concern in one of the emails um, and talked about well getting an outside assessment done. Taking a look at the things that we're looking at addressing here. I'm not sure you need an outside assessment to know that your HVAC is 20 years old and, and or older because it may have been gone going even further back and it's being held together by duct tape. You know what I mean? You know, you, we know you can have a more efficient system. And even going through that list, the, the most the majority of that list does not need an out a third party to say, you know what, um, this is this really needs to be on the list or not be on the list. And as far as other things that are breaking, I think Bob really has a handle on, you know, when when, when Sunderland did its review recently with an. Uh, they had a consultant come in to do their building things. I mean, they deferred to Bob for, this, for the elementary school to compare where his notes were. And his, I'll be honest, I thought it was more comprehensive. He had a more comprehensive list. You know, there were more things on it than the, the, the outside person did. So, I don't know. Sometimes you hire a consultant to tell you what time your watch says. Just because I'm looking at it from a, policy, from a budget standpoint, looking at this, this building individually, and if you have mechanics in the building that are being replaced, what are the estimated reductions in efficiencies that are picked up? And these are things that are really important. Finance committee committing long, long, committing longer to fund to understand where to invest up front. But what's our core and core return in terms of reduced operating costs and things that might be earmarked then towards an ongoing uh, capitalization for the rate of maintenance budget. That kind of that's, uh, that gives me more comfort that we're making a really important decision. And then just to add on for those, this does not include looking at. Um, Green communities grants, and when you talk about lighting and lighting in this library, I mean, we're already looking to you know get those extra. That's not including. This is being um, you know conservative. That we're not getting any outside funding um, and, and that kind of thing. And energy efficiencies and other budgets being offset. Uh, Fred Barron, Waitley Finance Bay. I'm just, I'm concerned about the adequacy of the stabilization fund. You're showing 1.5 million coming in over 10 years to cover 1.555. Okay, let's just wash out that fifty-five thousand. But you're not accounting for any increase in costs. You're taking twenty eighteen in costs and you know, applying yeah. them to twenty twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Is it 
anticipated that you would add another year onto this, at least another year onto this stabilization, or just make it a permanent feature that there needs be, to be always be that contribution to stabilization? Yeah, you know, I, I, I go back and forth on on whether to inflate, you know, uh, expenditures over the course of time, and and I've ultimately decided that it's it's so unpredictable and. and and I used to do well, the, uh, the, the, the exact figures were unpredictable. That cost will go up is predictable. Um, yeah, but I, when I used to do real estate appraisals, uh, it, there was this um, the time value of money, and so you would you would inflate the the cost going forward, then you would deflate the money coming backwards to get a present value of future dollars and stuff, and it sort of balanced off. And I can't get that out of my head. Well, I mean, you you're, know, you're so not going to be able to get it, you're not going to be getting any interest on this money because it's going to be spent as it comes in on the project. So as you get into years 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, those projects just, are just going to be more expensive than <coughs> anticipated now. Um, not, that $150,000 uh, may not be spent in a given year. The following year, you could spend well, three hundred. dollars you know? no. So by year three, you're going to have $450,000 out of debt. And then you go to do the roof, and there goes 400000 out of yeah. out of the fund. That's and then you go to do the repay of the parking lot in two years after that, and there goes 300000 So you're not going to be getting any income out of that not a lot. Out of that corpus. Yeah. Trevor? Well, my, I guess to your point, but yes, I, I, my, my view is that that continues, because when we get to year 11, you're still going to have expenses and things that we haven't even thought of yet. And so my, I guess the whole idea was to set up this capital plan and get a committee and kind of constantly run that plan forward for 20 okay. years. Uh, I, I agree that's, with that. That's fine, but yeah, so you're right. we're in here that you intend to make it a permanent budget. I'm here we should raise the cost. We've, we've been we've been just putting away on a light item, $50,000 a year for, and I, I, maybe you could tell us if it's been 50000 for all these years. You know, gets to a point, 50000 hasn't been enough for the last 10 years, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it should have been bumped up those years, but there again, Paul loves us because we come in at two, two and a half or so, and, and that's one of the other reasons where we don't bump it up. Right. We take it out of school choice to pay for something instead of bumping it up a little bit, to, you know, to pay for it. I mean, in the, case, in the case of the track, and this is one of the biggest things I brought up during our meetings that we were having, you know, the track, you know, you got some CPA money out there. If you want to pay for the track through your CPA money, because it's a town thing that people can use, you can use your CPA money on it. And I think Deerfield has a few dollars. I think all our towns have a few dollars in there. That you can, that's $600,000 that can be taken care of, we'll say, with CPA money. Scott was made about those the capital stabilization program end at the end of year ten, and, and the recommendation from the committee was no, that's that's part of an ongoing program. So I want to make sure that, that that's clear. It, do, it doesn't end. It it goes on, recognizing that you have an asset that needs maintenance. Okay. And, it, and, and, and made yeah, right. Well, we we no. just went for ten year window, but the policy for the creation of it was to create the policy and the account and the funding mechanism. And that funding mechanism will have some, some fluid nature over, over time that just happens. Okay. Well, sorry. Uh, Elliot Crow with the uh, Sentinel and Finance. The first question is whether it can be, if we can write in to the stabilization after X number of years, if we can add an addendum so that it actually allows and builds in something to account for the fact that materials are going to be skyrocketing in value or in the next you know five years so that every five years or so to allow for a reassessment mm -hmm. of whether it's going to be 150 or whether we need to bring it up to 175 or something uh, the second one was was sort of uh, unrelated and it was just that the uh, our committee members uh, noticed a couple things in the backlog uh, this is sort of a, a sidetrack but um, as far as as since the backlog is really important to how much we're borrowing in the first place uh, there were two questions that seemed to be redundant one of them was rubber flooring the weight room being twice uh, and whether we have two separate weight rooms 
that are getting floored for the exact same amount of money, or whether the same amount's just coming up yeah, twice. That was a, a dupe that's been taken out. And then the second one was the uh, tech of rekeying all the exterior doors, and then also rekeying the building and establishing a second grandmaster key. If those can be combined in some way to, to uh, instead of being a 25 and a 10, if those can be consolidated into 130 to, instead of... To, to even talk about the fluidity of this thing is that the school committee has already put money toward the the um, entry, the keying of the outdoor of this building and going to a key card model. And we're already in, we've already put money toward that. So technically that's already being removed up. To talk about how this is a, it's not, this document is a snapshot in time and we're moving forward already as a school. So, because we've been here already for three months. So. You know, that's a good example of that right there, that that's probably gonna be removed from the list. Um, you probably noticed that the, the flooring was put twice, but the curtains in the auditorium didn't have a number. So if you're looking at that old one, it really, that, that 9,000 should have been moved up to the, where the curtains are. This is how you changed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. And so, um, I'm sure the football coach would like a second weight room as well, but he's just gonna get me. <laughs> Fred? Yeah, I'd like just to say, this is this was a, the subcommittee's best guess at a 10-year program, with, supported by these projects. And one of the recommendations to move forward on this is to have some oversight on it with a subcommittee, continue a subcommittee. And it, as it discusses in here, it's that subcommittee that's going to monitor this over the next 10 years plus. And if costs change or priorities change, it's going to come down to that subcommittee proposing changes every year and how we how we implement this and how it moves forward. It's not a static thing and this is fixed what we're gonna do in 10 years and these are all the projects we're gonna have. It's not the only projects. There could be other ones come up or, or some fall off the list. So there is, I think, built into the program a, a method of tracking all this and reporting and, and assigning or determining priorities and how to proceed from year to year. And if things change considerably, then it's gonna be up to either the subcommittee or the school committee to, to change either the stabilization amount or something else on here to make sure that we continue with this program. I mean, I, I don't see it. I mean, it's anybody's guess whether 150,000 is gonna be enough every year. And I, I think there's enough flexibility in here and there should be enough flexibility to change that amount. Five, six, seven years from now, if everybody decides that's not enough, because our priorities aren't being addressed or the costs are higher, well, then it's up to this committee to change that. And I think you have the authority to do that. It's not something fixed forever. But don't forget, we've been at 50,000 for right. X amount yeah. of years, so 100, right. 150 versus 50, it seems like a lot, but like you said, it could, it could change. But, but 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 this is support for that amount. Now in the past I don't know how much support you had for the fifty or or if everybody agreed on, on what you're gonna do with the fifty, but this is a program to move forward with. And you think it's important for those who didn't read the didn't read the, every page of the report and all this of the cameras that this subcommittee is, is like how we got here today, a joint committee of select board members and school committee members working together to you know, working together to so it's not like this vote is going off and then towns are suddenly going to lose all control over um, capital, capital funding in the future. Where, where that mechanism is put into place into this plan, um, you know, it's moved forward. Um, but that's the idea, is that to have that transparency, you can have membership on the committee looking what the progress is being made, looking to make sure things are getting, you know, funded or not funded, or depending on what the towns can do. Robert? Just to summarize a little bit, <coughs> Basically, the school committee came to the conclusion, at least I did, that we needed to do certain things. And I pushed to make sure that we got a list of everything that was coming down the road so we'd have our eyes wide open and try to tackle it because we didn't want to go back to the well twice. Okay. Uh, and one of my thoughts, listening to everybody, is some of the towns have substantial monies set aside for uh, stabilization, and they also have the uh, CPA money. And if the towns and the finance committees wanted to recommend a solution of upfronting these costs from 
from an assessment to the stabilization or for uh, agreeing to the, use their uh, CPA money, uh, it would save a lot of the money going forward and answer a lot of the questions we've had today. But I'm not, I'm not a wizard at, at what should be done, uh, but we should, we should not close our minds to the fact that some of the towns, I'm not sure all of them, but some will have substantial revenues. And uh, it might make it easier uh, to solve that problem by upfronting so much money to start with and then working it through so it's not a great big hit all right from taxation. So it's up to you people. I mean. Anybody else? Thank you for your comments. Bob, I didn't know if you want to move up the negotiations because we have select board members in the room. Okay. That uh, page two. Gotcha. So, while we still have select board members here, we're still, we really need somebody that's going to be the rep for the no negotiation team. Okay. Scott? Sorry. <laughs> we're negotiating. Okay. <laughs> But this is but but this is something that the select board members need to have a delegate to be on the on the negotiation team. We start on the twenty seventh and we and we don't meet until December, so we really need to find out who is gonna be You need one person, right? We need yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So so basically out of the law is written is that the chairs of the select board will send themselves or a representative to this meeting and at this meeting they will select a representative to serve on the negotiations team. If they're unable to come up with a, a person, they can send it to the state and the state will draw from a hat. School attorney has, has um, suggested that um, if you can't come to a vote yourself, you should draw from a hat and don't, don't waste, try to go to the state and waste their waste time. So, um, so that's basically where we're at. So if, if I understand we have some people here that want to serve, and if you guys can figure that out, it's kind of an awkward spot for us to watch, but that's where we're at. <laughs> Bill, you put your name in, right? Yeah, and the Conway Select Board has communicated already to the administration what our choice is, uh, what its choice will be, is. Mean? There's only one. There's only one. one. We're one talking about person. Frontier, not Union. Yes. Union 38, oh, just to get to, right. just to avoid any confusion, Union 38 has a delegate from each of the towns. Right. Frontier has one municipal delegate. Okay? And it's supposed to be selected by the select board chairs, are supposed to agree upon one person. It's just that we've gone through a long history of it being figured out before this evening that that's why there's some confusion there. So to answer your question, <clears throat> yes, I did. And yes, that's what. <clears throat> My name in from the town of Sunderland uh, as well. Um, and Deerfield? And Deerfield was going to recommend Scott Bergeron to represent Deerfield. Yeah, and uh, Whaley is going to recommend Boston. Scott Bergeron as well. No, to, is. To no. represent. Oh, did I say that in past tense? Yeah. And Conway? Conway recommended me. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Conway is outvoted. So they are outvoted. <laughs> yep. So Scott, you're welcome, Scott. Oh, welcome, we Scott. Approve. We have to approve. We have to, approve. We have to vote. They have it's, to vote. It's in the note that says you have to vote to approve, approve the town representatives' oh, negotiations. Really? I guess you're accepting them into. Okay. Okay. So moved. Thank you. I do. Russ here. Yeah. 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 I do. Who's the second? Who's the second? We have to vote them into. I've been watching since seven. Oh. Are you watching YouTube back there? No, are you on? Do you, we have to vote in the negotiated, the, the representative? I think seven? I just vote to acknowledge. Vote to acknowledge. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Who's the second? Make, make any difference. Does not. Yep. All in favor? Thank you, Scott. Thank you. You have been recognized. <laughs> I wish you didn't volunteer. Thanks for all of you guys coming tonight. <laughs> November 27th. <laughs> we'll send you a message. Thanks. I suppose we don't have a student. There is no student right there. Uh, so, did 
Yeah. Where we did the right. So I'll discuss it as part of my report. It's in our it's okay. superintendent's report, so you can just skip over that. Um, update on Christian Lane. That's what I meant. Oh, I'll okay. My, my superintendent's report. But we already did the uh, frontier building update. Uh, discuss capital draft. We did the draft capital plan too, right? Yep. Okay. Sorry. No votes. Well, we had a public comment on it. Yeah, we can discuss Yes, true. No, we do need to discuss what we want to do next on one. So we are on discussion of the capital, the draft, the capital plan. Um, to vote December. on the next meeting. So okay. we heard a lot of feedback from the community. And what is our what is our next step? Subcommittee, subcommittee should meet one more time and come up with a recommendation or any recommendations based on the comments and go forward. So that would be the charge of the school committee if they want if that's the school committee want the subcommittee to go back and meet again to discuss. I mean, you have, you have the no, you have all the options. This, the, we we created this calendar, so if at this point we need to have another time frame put in place. We're very close to where we want to be, um, but you know the questions of you know, clearly we heard loud and clear about oversight and mm -hmm. whether or not how, the different ways we could address it, the oversight. Can kind of think through some things um, there, and then the other option, the other question is looking at the numbers themselves. And the way I, you know, speaking for Joe is Joe said you get this plan together, and then you kind of iron out the, um, you know, how you're going to finance it. You're going to change those numbers because you can change those numbers anywhere along the way um, moving forward. So, you know, we could have a, a look at those numbers to kind of. You know, because when we looked at those numbers and, and hearing the comments, I mean, some of those are the costs are already baked in. There's, you know, fifty thousand is already kind of put in there, and you know, we can uh, you know go through and try to have a more a clear public side of things. That this is what we're going to be asking for financially. But I think we need a greater contingency because they were driving away that they didn't think we had. Right, and, and the supervision. Those are the main things. And, uh, well, how about a sell it? And, how, uh, would that be fun? We're going to have to do that, or we're not going to sell it. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the the main theme, what I heard, was oversight. It seems like some people want some oversight, which maybe that can be added. But um, is there? Is there a concern or is it just really scare tactic from some of these finance committee members that uh, trying to budget these projects in these town, you know, in the town budget, is that a, is that a real, is that a real thing? I mean, how can we as a school committee, I guess, advertise this plan, right? When we go to the town and we say, yeah, we think this is a good thing and this, these are the projects that we need done. And then we have residents, we have finance committee members saying, "Well, how are we going to how are we going to pay for it?" You know, my you know, my solution is, "Okay, well, let's ask for a two percent, two and a half percent override." But a lot of people aren't going to like that. <laughs> um, so, is that a real, true fear factor trying to pass this, or is it? I mean, right, what's his name again? That was old. Joe. Joe. You know, he seemed to really. Kind of downplay it and say well, these really aren't the real numbers it's not going to play out that way but to say that in a town meeting say well it's really not going to play out that way i, I don't i don't know how that's going to come out hold on keep one so i don't know we can answer that okay so just a, a little bit we we talked about the need to really get out there ahead of like a town meeting vote and um sort of publicize the needs and uh the, you know the, the, in particular, the track, because the track is a big number, it's one thing, and it's, um, for people that don't know about it, it how can it cost that much, and it, how, why is it so important, all that. And those are all questions with real answers that make, you know, that need to get brought out there. And um, I think we, we talked about that, the need for, you know, to get the recorder to, you know, et cetera, to, what this is why a, re a rebuilding, um, of a track cost this much, and then to, to really get out there, what, how important the 
program is, the track program is, to the fabric of this institution, <laughs> etc. Um, and and that goes down the line for for pretty much for all of it. We know that that's part of it that we talked about. Cindy. Um. So, anyways, I'm really glad all those people showed up tonight. Yeah. I thought that they were uh, um, uh, just so much information yeah. and. The whole idea of a project manager or something, I, I'm right on board with that. I don't know how we do that, but that one person that really does know everything. The subcommittee is a fantastic idea, but along with that, I think we owe thanks to Bill and Mary for all of their work over the years to try to get these things, and now it's happening. We already had that discussion, but thank you so much for all your hard work and getting those phone calls at 3 o'clock in the morning. and all that type of stuff from neighbors in that. So I think we sell it short that we haven't been trying to keep that money um, coming up, but things get in the way. Um, my only um, concern is CPA monies being used. Um, it was brought up twice to use them for the track. And you have to be able to assure those towns that that track's gonna be available to them to use that type of money. And right now, the way I understand it is because of where the track's located, it's perfect for a track, but not good for security situations. So we have to be really careful about that because you're going to think pe people are going to think like myself that I can just pop over and walk the track for a little while, and that's not going to happen. We've, and we've and we've talked about that during our yeah. during so our meetings and stuff. So then we would have stuff. to hire yeah. somebody to oversee that. Well, you get there's a couple involved. things you can do. The, the biggest fear about track is someone riding a bike on it, right. taking a dirt bike. So you can put in. You can put in certain entrances that they've done on other tracks. You put cameras up that will hold accountability and, and, and security. Mm -hmm. Again, that would have to be built in the cost of doing that, but cameras are not as expensive as they were 10 years ago. But we need to be very upfront about yeah. that to the camera. And yeah. I only brought it up because we'll pick on Deerfield because Deerfield has like over a million dollars in C or $2 million <laughs> in CPA. So I was just thinking, you know, it's one big less expensive. Everybody wanted to use CPA money on it. That's the only reason I brought it up. And we have brought it up about the security. Mm -hmm. Keep you know dirt bikes off. I mean we 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 have talked about it. But it, first it, it also I mean it also talks about creatively finding money to to knock down some of this. So if Deerfield's getting the lion's share because it's got the greatest population, obviously it also has the greatest budget. Um, but if they want to knock down a percentage of that budget using CPA money, they could do that as a town where Conway could say, listen, that, that CPA money that doesn't us using the track may not be as realistic as Deerfield because it's not in our backyard. We'd have to drive down the hill. I mean, they could choose. Not everybody doesn't have to do the same. They could break it apart. Right. We got into that, but we tried not to. We didn't put it into the plan because it got a little too. I mean, that's when you start getting finance committees trying to get, I don't want to say clever, but they try to get creative right. in, in tr finding solutions. But I think we're, what's to kind of bring us back, I think we need to have a, we have to have a decision of what we want to do next, because it does need to be, I don't think we're ready for a vote, because we no. can't just shut the book here and let's meet next time and have a vote. What do we want to do between now and the next meeting? Does this committee want to work through those things? Does it want to charge a subcommittee again to kind of come through the things? And what are those things I'm talking about? So my thoughts on the plan are, I heard some different things about, it's going to cost a lot of money. How do we get to this point? Can we push it off? So I, I feel like it has to be done. So my backing is this plan has to be done right now. We cannot put it off or it's going to cost more. So the other side of it was the project manager side. And I want to look at, um, is this something that Bob can take on? If there's three or five bids that have to go out or should we look at um, finding a new position description and then maybe bringing on an assistant or a building and I think that's what we really should be looking at. Can he oversee this or is there going to have to be some individual building representative? So to respond to that, you know, when I'm hearing what everybody's saying and I'm looking what Bob's overseeing now, there's merit to it. You know what I mean? And in the sense of is it is his position a position and a half? And do we is there is that a realistic position we do is a part time someone who works part time whether it's a couple days a week or half days or flex schedule based on hours to oversee projects. You know, it's one thing, it's something you can put it into the budget. It doesn't necessarily have to be for 10 years. We're going to fund this for so long to see how it is because there are a lot of these small projects that are also happening in the four other schools Bob's overseeing. Okay. And then there's even requests from the town if Bob would help them oversee some of the town things. And he's, <laughs> he is already, and, and there is money to be saved with proper oversight. You know, there's certainly money to be lost 
with improper oversight. So when I heard them tonight, and I even said kind of said to Jody, so Joe said, that's easy to add. You know, you guys were trying to keep this lean and mean, you know, uh, as a thing, but it, you know, when I'm sitting here thinking about it, I go, boy, a part-time person in addition, not just to do this stuff, but even the other things in the elementary school could be a win-win. And that might be something that a subcommittee could look at. And not, you know, you know, within this budget, it's not a lot more money if you talk about a part-time position. Um, you know, you could, you know. Is it not my understanding that Bob is looking forward to retiring in a year? Yep, that's correct. And it might be something where he might be interested in buying into uh, those the maximum the number of days he can work as a retired employee to handle that stuff? I, I think you'd be better. So somebody like Bob in a retired space for a part-time position might be perfect with this position. I wouldn't build a position around a person. Oh, I would build a, build a position and then if, but, if someone like that. To, right. I want to avoid putting a permanent, another permanent staff person in there with, with the overhead going forward. You know, it has to I'm almost that. suggesting maybe we look at a permanent position moving forward with the amount, you know, for those of you who are on the elementary committees, the amount of capital projects that are happening there and the expediency with their happening it's because he's being pulled many different well, ways. Well, they're paying that, that part of the And they would be paying yeah, for, well, fine. I mean, that's we could decide that. And, that's and we'd have to go to the, those committees as well, but I'm not afraid to ask that. So, anyway. So, do we need a motion to send you back to another meeting? Or just let's go I think you would, you would ask the, you would, you would just, you would ask this, the subcommittee to meet again to come up with um, suggestions and how to proceed. So ask. Okay, I guess you'd vote that in. I'm, I'm guessing, or I guess the chair can just the chair can just. This is new territory for me. The chair can just you subcommittee go do. I think we right? all feel that, anyways. Well, I'm on the subcommittee, so that we would like you to to go iron out these and bring this back something. But I don't think we all want. I don't want to be. I, I think you need your subcommittee to do that. If it was, it was, if it was left to the 11 of us, we wouldn't be where we are now. No. The subcommittee did a much more effective job Way more. at wheeling this thing than, than 11 of us would have, right. could have ever done. No. So let it go the way it's going. Didn't it's they blame you at one point? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have broad shoulders. Recommendation uh, motion by Cindy Second by Phil to charge the committee to, um, to meet again to determine next steps in response to the public comment received on the draft report. Presented, presented at the next meeting and have a vote. You want to vote, vote in December too? Yeah. Possible vote? Possible. To prepare for, yeah. for yeah. a vote. Possible. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, we're sure. still people within a time frame. You could table one month and we could still meet our trajectory. Possible but, vote. But, yeah. but, yeah. but yeah. don't say that yet. I agree with you. Yeah. If we can vote, let's vote. Yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't think we're necessarily ready for December. I don't think you should vote and move forward without, <laughs> without consensus with the town. You have to have that. Yeah. Correct. Anybody, my question, E and D, the report got done. How much do we forecast the E and D is? We don't have E and D completed yet. We have the end of the year report, but that's not E and D. But was there any surplus at all? Sure. And what was the number? Well, the surplus, I mean, you have to calculate it based on the budgeted amount for FY18. I have to look up what that is. Right. Because E&D is the difference between budgeted and received revenue, okay. not necessarily just expenditures. Do you work later this week here? If I stop by, can you show me? Thursday? Sure. All right. yeah. I'll try to stop by. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second for us to go back. Fred, you had a question before we... Uh, can I just make a comment uh, from the subcommittee, uh, I guess, in... in it's come more to light talking with people in town and they're getting aware of the project and the need for funding and one of the first things that come to mind is the track. Say we're spending 600000 on a track. Why? Isn't there other priorities? Well, all the other 52 projects get lost. I think my suggestion that the subcommittee and maybe the, the, this committee look at refocusing what's our emphasis here and, and to sell it to the public if you're going for and, and the report mentions track all the time is the first priority I think that's going to kill the project for people that don't see the need for that uh, 
it's safety and security and energy efficiency, however you want to package it. It's what people are concerned about at schools, not a track, funding a track. If you want to sell it to people in towns that don't have kids in school, that don't participate in athletics, you need to do more than tell them the show the priority is, is the track. I just look at safety and security as, as the reason for doing this. And that's what most of the other projects are for. They're related to that, but it gets lost in a discussion of a track. Yes, it's a big, it's the biggest forward. item, and, and 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 I'm not arguing it's not needed, but it, it's the biggest item, and I, I think it's it's going to drive the whole process, the whole vote. Oh, only thing I can tell you is if you go and say the same thing to Bob Smith, yeah. and Bob Smith gets up in front of town meeting people, and Bob Smith's been the track coach for thirty years, years? Uh, at least thirty plus major. years. I mean, that's, I don't think anybody's going to argue with Bob Smith saying how, how this thing's been repaired, as you, as you well know. Yeah. And I understand where you're coming from, but this thing's been repaired and repaired and repaired, and people, you know, that's a safety thing too. I, I know, but yeah. maybe come at it at a different angle from, from safety and bring in the, the track is, is one of the things that you need to do. Too. Right. So, uh, but the, the thing is, that track gets used for physical education, Daily in good weather. I, I mean, yeah. I think we're getting way off the no, topic. But I, I think we, is we're, are we going to send this to subcommittee? What are we doing? In a safety component. That's oh, why yeah. we we're focusing on doing track is because of the safety concerns of the track. Well, right. I do agree that we do have to do a marketing plan once marketing we get what we're going to do in right. place because there's no way the general public's going to want to read this document to figure out what we're doing. Right. I agree. Okay. That was my suggestion to look at that. So we lead with everything else and then go, oh yeah, I'm track. <laughs> yeah. we, we have a motion and a second, and anybody else have anything they want to, before we vote on it? All in favor of, for the subcommittee meeting one more, at least one more time? Right. You'll be getting a doodle from me. <laughs> I love those doodles. Okay, next we have to to rescind a vote from June 13, 2017, adopting MGLC 21B section 21223, and hold a vote on correct the MGL 32B section 21 and 23. This is very simple. It sounds complicated. <laughs> what has happened is we announced to the union that we were going to make a vote that we are agreeing on the. Um, Procedure moving forward for reviewing the health care. We put it in, we put it, we posted it in one of our agendas. The following month, we voted on it. In the minutes, the wrong, something under mining, under Mass General Law was putting in there instead of what you should we should have voted on. So we what was said in the agenda and what was put in the minutes was different. And so, under advice from our attorney. <laughs> you're in best you're in best spot to re-vote it because your minutes are what happened in the meeting no matter what so we are re-voting exactly what we have posted we had to send it back the information back out to the union to let them know that we are voting it again um but it's basically a re-vote because of a clerical error <laughs> so um, moved i have a second second any other discussion what was what was it about mining the one that was the number it was put in the Donna so, looked it up. She goes, we, we voted so something about mining. So they don't have to work in the mine. So mind. now we because can't strip mine. that is one way to raise revenue. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to rethink this. All in favor? <laughs> Thank you. School improvement plan? Do we have to amend it? No, we just re -voted. That's it? we re-voted it. Make sure just make sure okay. it's good. It says, you. and hold a vote on the correct MGL chapter 32 Oh, did you say rescind? It said to rescind yep. and then rescind the vote and adopt it. It would also be best practice, as was just said, thank you, that what Cindy just said, that we probably should rescind the fact that we want to mine somewhere. So rescind so the other I vote. rescinded the vote. That's what we just voted on. Though. Okay, that now vote. Motion. Now we're going to adopt it. So we need to vote on adopt. We need to rescind the vote we took and then readapt. 
with Mass okay, General so Law Chapter 32B, Section 21 and 23, which is what we were trying to do in the first place. Yeah. I right. second Motion that. what he said. <laughs> right? She's so we have it. to undo and then do. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? Yeah, Thanks. Okay. So uh, I have copies of the school improvement plan. Thanks. Uh, so we can pass it. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Thanks. And we can take a couple minutes to go over it. <clears throat> it's it's uh, it's very similar to the past school improvement plan. Uh, there have been some. Uh, oh, so some it's really updates. good. It's so it's <laughs> absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Who, who made that? Like a, <laughs> I don't know. I had a couple. Of a few key improvements. Uh, Two key improvements, and, and it's it's actually we've been working on it with the with the, uh, with the school council, which has actually been really nice. Um, so we're going to continue to so. And does everybody have a copy? Almost. I'll wait. So we're going to continue to focus on assessments and common scoring of, assi of assignments, and we're we're continuing to do book discussions on grading, uh, linking assessments to standards and objectives. We've been focusing a lot uh, on with our professional development uh, over the past couple of months on standards-based thinking and standards-based assessments, uh, and we've been getting actually very good feedback from the uh, from the staff about that. Uh, we're going to continue work on differentiated instruction. Uh, we're going to be developing uh, creating a data team. Um, and focusing on, uh, on, uh, on parsing our data, looking at our data more closely. Uh, we are, we've already done, we've already administered the PSAT to students in grades 9, 10, and 11, uh, and the ACCUPLACE for as well. Um, we're gonna potentially expand it to grade eight. Uh, we're gonna continue mapping our curriculum with higher order thinking. Uh, we've got some curriculum changes that have been happening. Uh, obviously, uh, social studies has been changing, uh, and science is, uh, there's a new, uh, there are new um, standards for science as well that the department has been working very diligently on, on updating. Um, we're gonna continue, uh, turn to page two, we're gonna continue to explore assessment systems and current practices to assist with the implementation of common assessments. Uh, we are going to continue with the implementation of our AP seminar and AP capstone courses. Uh, one of our AP, uh, Teachers is, who uh, is here this uh, this evening, uh, Allison Walters, who is teaching our uh, AP CAP seminar, and we're going to be uh, uh, continuing with that next year. Um, we're restructuring our special education program. We've been in the process of doing that. We've actually done physical restructuring, uh, physical, um, I should say, restructuring in terms of we've moved rooms in the building, and we've uh, we've continued to uh, increase our inclusionary practices, which and it's actually been really. We've been, we've been getting really positive, good feedback about that. We're gonna to continue to focus on social justice. Uh, the CES is the collaborative. Uh, they've, they've come in the past and we've done in-house trainings as well this year. Uh, the school schedule review and development, we have developed uh, a new schedule uh, that hopefully will uh, alleviate some of, the, uh, some of the problems with the schedule. In the past, uh, we've heard that there have been, there have been conflict between um, students that have wanted to sign up for, say, uh, particular AP classes and or arts classes, and then there was a conflict where they couldn't sign up for both, so we've um, created a schedule that has what they call a skinny or a short block in it, and uh, we've uh, rolled it out to the union, and by and large, we've gotten very positive feedback. Uh, so we're gonna move forward with that and implement that uh, for next year, so we're gonna be looking at a new schedule for next year. Uh, page three. Uh, Develop a communication plan to improve and expand how information is shared with parents in the community. Uh, we're doing that through School Messenger, through our website, uh, through social media, uh, and hopefully we're gonna continue to do that and to uh, increase communication as well. Uh, the School Council has been uh, very helpful in working with us to, uh, to help focus what we should be doing as well. Uh, for, uh, and then for some more physical things, uh, examining the library configuration and use. Um, we've already started uh, doing some improvements to the library. We've, we've actually installed the the, uh, the air conditioning I don't know I guess you can call them air conditioning units we've installed four of them yeah yeah four of them uh, this year we're going to continue updating the library and then we're going to be continuing to work uh, on developing obviously this the ten year the facility plan uh, with the bond the school um, so that's basically there's a lot there but a lot of it is um, we're already doing um, and uh, some of it we've already actually. You've already gotten done, so uh, that's basically what we're looking at with the school. Group. Any questions? Yes, sir. You uh, are going to be looking at the bullying, making sure that that's addressed. 
Um, that's, I mean, that's one of the things, that's a constant, that's something that we do all the time. Um, and, we, and we're required to have that, basically, by law, we have to have, an, uh, we have to have, uh, we have to have information about that already in our student handbooks. So it's included? That, and that's included in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, yes. Just yeah. want to make sure. Yeah. Anybody else have? Is there any change to any curriculum with the new state civics requirement? So we're going to be moving. We're going to be moving social. So basically, when you're looking at civics, it's going to be talking about. So civics is supposed to be going to the eighth grade. So we're going to be some shuffling to that. I don't know. Do you want to address any? Of, she's our department head too. Is she allowed to address any of that as a member oh, yeah. of the public? Yeah, sure. Do you want to address any of that, Allison? So turn the camera. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> so the social studies department is looking at doing a realignment to make some shifts. Um, one of the things that the new state frameworks for social studies allows is you don't have to throw out everything and recreate something brand new, but what we're looking at is putting a large civics component in the eighth grade, pushing some history, early history back to the elementary schools. There's a fifth grade um, increase in curriculum and then moving some of the later of the eighth grade course up into the high school, into the 10th grade class. And we're working this year on lining our courses up with the new frameworks. Thanks. Thank you. We have Thank to uh, <coughs> we have to vote on the school we'll approval plan. Yeah. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Let's get our reports done. Uh, I don't have anything collaborative. Is meeting when, Bob? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. The deficit is roughly less than twenty-five thousand projected amount before, but I haven't, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the audit report tomorrow night, et cetera, et cetera, but they lost over 100,000 prior to that. So we really need to look at long range whether or not we're getting the right numbers. You're going to report back in December? I'll try. I'll try. I'm still there. No more free meals at the end. No more free meals? Oh, no. They get free meals, buddy. Okay. But, but most of the, but a lot of the way you carry it. There's no prime rib. Okay. And no lobster salad. Right. George, you have a report for us? Sir? I do. Actually, I've got a report and I've got a couple of handouts I want you to have as well. Okay. So here's the report. And I've got two handouts. Just and. No, Gary. I'm handing out mine at the same time just for experience. He's got two handouts. So don't read mine first. <laughs> yeah, don't get the cool oh, views. a more friendly font. <laughs> I got yours. See, that's how you do which is, it. Which font is more friendly? <laughs> I think mine's more friendly. Mine's bigger. Yeah, <laughs> I need that now. Because I forgot my reading glasses. We don't need glasses. So um, with the principal's report, I do want to skip. I'll come back to one. Uh, uh, number one is actually um, what the uh, the handouts are about, and so I'll talk about that a little. So I just want to go to start with number two, um, just so, just some basic things. So once again, so uh, just in terms of recent professional development, when we had PD on election day, uh, it was a full day of PD. Uh, with it was with the, actually with the assistant superintendent of Grafton. Um, uh, her, her name was Callow, um, and she was wonderful. And it was a, and it was entitled uh, homework as an informative assessment. Uh, it, it, and basically, it entailed a detailed look at current practices of, of homework and how we're how we're utilizing homework and providing effective feedback for students as teachers. Um, and you know, uh, we all we took we took part in the PD. It was it was really good. The the feedback that we got from the teachers was very positive. They were really they were really they really liked it. Um, so um, and that's continuing with our you know part of our uh, our school improvement plan too in terms of like looking at how we're assessing students. Um, bullet, uh, number three, uh, our boys soccer team, football team, the girls volleyball team, field hockey team, and golf team, and cross country team all advanced to tournament play this season. Um, the, the, the girls volleyball team did win the Western Mass uh, Championship. Uh, unfortunately, they did lose this evening to Bourne uh, in the state semis. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, um, Glad I didn't bet on them. <laughs> uh, and then just another quick little thing. We, yeah. We did have a group of students who visited New York uh, 
on the 9th of November with our English teacher, uh, Melissa Strelke, they, uh, including the highlights of the trip included a trip, a visit to Ellis Island and the World Trade Center Memorial. Um, so, uh, uh, and I just want to circle back to the first one. So uh, what you have is the one that says memo. It's a report of the graduating class of 2018. So if, if you want to take a couple minutes to look at that, um, basically what that's going to give you is it's going to give you, uh, it's going to give you a list of the students of the, the, the colleges and universities that our, our graduates attended, went to. Uh, it's also going to give you, um, if you continue further along in the report, uh, where they were accepted. Um, and then if you, and some of the other data that you can look at that's actually interesting. Um, the 20, there's a 20 year perspective in terms of uh, how many students going, or went to a four year college. Uh, you know, the numbers, how they've increased. You can take a look from 1999 to 2018, how they've jumped uh, almost 20% in terms of students attending a four year college. Um, and, and there are other, histor there's other historical data that's, that's interesting. So, um, this is really cool. I, I think if you take a couple minutes to look at that. And um, the 2018, 2019, the school profile, this is, this report is what actually gets sent out to colleges. This is sort of like our, the informational sheet that Frontier sends out, the guidance sends out. And this has been updated um, uh, to sort of reflect, uh, like a, 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 to reflect more uh, current data and information. So um, just it's sort of like a snapshot of the school. Um, so there's a lot of good information in this as well. So I, I think you'll actually enjoy looking at both of these. Uh, a lot of the, it's, it's, it's good data. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, a lot of it's really fascinating to see how things have changed over the past 20 years, or in some cases, 40 years. Um, uh, so that's basically where, where I stand with this. Congrats to all of you on the increased four-year college rate. That's right. It's really huge. Really impressive. Yeah. It's a big increase. It's interesting. It's interesting. You can see how much things have changed with that. Or and then with like the, the number of students entering the labor force, it's it's like that's changed. That's like decreased. Like most kids now are going off to going off to schools. You know. So it's, I think that that's probably the case for for every like everything further further afield as well. Not just us. Does anybody have any questions for George? Okay, Darius, you're up. Um, so you, I pass out the superintendent's report. You should have, basically what I, I have one report that goes all the, through all the committees and then I kind of put in, in front there who it pertains to for, for you guys. I think most things are on this list pertaining to you. Um, just, just an update for my own professional development. I've gone to three sessions of MARS, which is the, uh, the regional schools, um, Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools and did some financial classes with them. Um, went to three different ones to learn a little bit more about uh, regional finance and such. Most of it was review, but uh, I found it very helpful. Um, the sale of the closing on Christian Lane. So it kind of two and three kind of go together. I've been in, in contact with the buyer. Um, he wants to close at the end of December with the two properties happening at once. Um, however, our files being moved out um, my timeline is such that the company, the vendor that I was going to use to help us can't get in, to get in there until February. So I put a call into the buyer um, today. He's willing to work out something with, he doesn't feel comfortable owning the building with our files in it. Um, so I'm really kind of at the infancy, but this is where that's kind of is. So do I, the idea was the company that was gonna come in to help us with the files and file organization was going to organize them in the space that's there, pack them up, then ship them over to a closet that I commandeered here at, <laughs> at Frontier. Um, we could move all those files into some place at Frontier. There's no real empty space right now. We've got a pretty full building. Um, and do it here to move this thing up. So I'm, that's exactly I'm in the middle of that decision right now about how to pursue forward. So um, the fact of learning that you couldn't do it until February happened when I was at the Cape last week. I, when I got back today, I called the buyer. who has been He's very flexible and he's not really, he doesn't want to actually get in there to start any work until um, to early spring, so um, you know he was he was open to that. I also don't want to delay, you know, delay the sale and, and then cause problems there. So I'm trying to get a little bit more. I haven't talked to our attorney about that at all. So I'll get there. Maybe we should have asked Fred if he has a little space he can rent us for a month or two. You know, over in the building, over at the Waitley building. I can follow up on that. I mean, all right, especially if we could take it out in groups and. If this group is here, I mean, yep. until we get February, 
where is this closet located? Are you uh, renaming the cafeteria? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really it's really condensed file storage in the sense that, that we're going to be stacking files on top back to back. So you because there's certain files we'll never right. I mean, there's not a long line of requests for 1954 um, school committee meeting minutes that right. you have to keep forever, right. and they're in a book. So you know we're going to bury those, but we have to map it so that we know where it is in case someone does right. ask for. If you know what they did for snow plowing right here, <laughs> it's in there. I read one of them. It's actually you learned here. You know, we will send a note to the town to stop piling the snow on the blah 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 blah. It's just very fun. Um, I'll bring one to the next meeting. Um, the unit three D doesn't affect you guys. The um, I went to the Cape last week, and it was just it's fairly informative. It's great to see um, other committees and other what other schools are working on, and just kind of that camaraderie of the whole state working on you know from finance to policies to keeping up with all the changes um i'm sure phil phil or olivia want to or bob want to say anything else on that you're certainly welcome um i was our delegate if you want to know how we voted i can tell you but if you don't care it's really fine <laughs> i don't know what you voted on that's why we made you the delegate <laughs> well okay so um we voted on things to send to the state legislature like recommendations for certain things um, and we rejected arming educators I'm sure you all agree um, a lot of schools had um, discussed this prior send to sending their delegate but we did not so I just made my best guess um, so there's uh, there are proposed modifications to chapter 70 financial assistance you know programming and establishing a working group to advise the legislature um, to support small and rural schools better, um, and we passed that. Um, they rejected uh, a notion of combining the U.S. Department of Ed with other departments, as the federal government is suggesting. Um, the regional school busing um, discussion was rejected because of wording issues, so don't worry about it. Um, the reporting and accountability for all schools that receive any public subsidies, including private and homeschooled students um, being held to the same standards that passed um, and evidence-based uh, reproductive health curriculum um, to be allowed um, because our government um, is redirecting funds to only schools who use absence only education um, so we passed that we would we recommend using evidence-based um, and all students should be allowed to use bathrooms and locker rooms for their preferred pronoun um, and embed, sed embed sensitivity training and professional development um, and provide uniform accommodations and um, there's a request in and MIAA is doing this to create standards around what to do with transgender um, students and what teams and um, how that needs to go. They're going to come up with their own set of rules and then that will all fall. So, um, and then they're amending a state law to allow five business, ba business days instead of two for um, to give a parent the information before an IEP meeting. Right now it's just two days and they voted to amend it to five days before the IEP meeting. So that's what we voted for. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. Bob, you want to add something? You always do. Uh, always do. Uh, I did get to, to meet uh, some people from down in the Shore Valley Technical School and they uh, showed me the board docs how they keep track of uh, their board business and what they do. And I introduced Darius to, to the superintendent. And uh, board docs is going to give a presentation about halfway tomorrow about 9.30. Uh, board docs, what it does is it takes, when you have it, it basically does your accounting, your warrants, your minutes, and everything else that you could, most everything, I'm not saying everything, and it may may increase our efficiency. Uh, it may not. So, but we should be looking forward rather than operating in the Stone Age like we are now. And, uh, you know, that was one thing. Uh, I did go to the Mars meeting, and uh, I was early on uh, Wednesday morning, and that, that was important. informative. And, uh, you know, it's a, you pick up so much just there talking to people. The food was pretty good. They gave us Philly on uh, Wednesday night. How was it, Phil? I wasn't there for the filet mignon, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, I, I found it. 
found it worthwhile to go. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you, you, you do pick up a lot of stuff. It's one of those things that, you, it's the, the things that you're not really there to consciously <laughs> focusing on, That's the, that, those are the kinds of things that you end up learning the most from because you didn't really know that you didn't, what you didn't know. Um, but uh, I was glad I went, left early to go fri on Friday to go fishing. I got really seasick. It was a bad idea. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to be going into executive session. Um, George, you can. You want George to stay? There he is. You don't have to stay, George. I don't. Know you but you can. <laughs> I'll stay. You stay, Darius. You're invited. <coughs> Allison, you can leave if you like, or or, or, you, want me to stay? or you prefer to stay. Well, yeah. don't we want him to stay? Yeah, depends if the party wants to stay. Sure. Why don't you stay? stay? And we'll be coming back from executive okay. session with no votes. So if you want to. Okay. So we're going to go into executive session. We don't have, we don't, we're not going to be taking a vote. No, no, no vote. vote, just information. No yep. Okay. So if you want to, you want to stay around in the hallway and then pack up afterwards, after we come back, or there will be no votes. Yeah. Uh, or do you want to pack up? It would take me a second to pack up. Go ahead. Why don't you do that? That way, why don't you do that? Yeah, Somebody unless you brought a pillow. The, um, <laughs> the first collective bargaining meeting on November 27th, does anyone have a time for that? Four o'clock on December. November twenty seventh is at four. Is it four? Four. Oh. 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 Yeah, as well. Just read it. Well, we're gonna make the declaration that we have made the same session and we have to do the roll call. We have the council here to be able to tell us that. 27th at 4 p.m. I gotta save the date. Jump on the fridge. <laughs> so we're gonna do a vote. We have to do a vote. Everything goes oh, yeah. on the fridge. Oh, yeah. it's, over. it's not on the fridge. You can't expect me to be there. <laughs> you can't expect so, me to we're going to executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 38, Section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining and litigation if an open meeting may have a determinant effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair to declare uh, to hear a level three grievance lodged by Teacher Association Unit C. Second. Roll call. Uh, yeah, sure. Bob Allen? Yes. Peters, yes. Bill Smith? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cindy Wimet? Yeah. Bill Cantor? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Robert Decker? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Damian Fosnott? Yes. Olivia Leone? Yes. Lynn Roberts? Absolutely. Okay. 